Do I have? Okay. So this is the Open Infra 101 session. Uh, partly just a very, very basic introduction to what it means, but also a chance if you have questions, throw them out. Um, so really, really basics, right? Infrastructure, the servers, software, and services that provide the base layer that other people build their things on top of, right? So it has nothing to do with web applications, but it does provide that base layer that everyone uses. Open means it's built out of open source components. So open infrastructure is just infrastructure built out of open source components. Um, and what this means is that there's not a monopoly. Anyone can use it, anyone can build infrastructure out of it, whether it's you know, inside their company or their organization or their project or even for their own home services. Whatever they need it for, it's available. So for OpenStack specifically, um, it's probably useful to be aware that OpenStack has actually integrated with a large number of open source projects from the very beginning, right? So in the very beginning, we knew we had to integrate with Linux distributions. We knew we had to deal with a whole lot of Python libraries and Python itself as a dependency. Um, and we knew that we had to interconnect with hypervisors and storage and all these pieces that were the base layer underneath OpenStack. So we've had that collaborative perspective from very early on. And as we went along, we started collaborating with open source projects that were consuming OpenStack. So OPNFE was a big example of that. And that was a little bit of a learning process for OpenStack as we, as we interacted with external project that was using OpenStack. So early in 2017, um, the board, the technical committee, and the user committee, we had a big strategy session uh, where we started talking about some of these ideas and the direction and the future of OpenStack. And one of the things we realized is that OpenStack doesn't exist in a vacuum. Um, so yes, we have all these dependencies, but we also have consumers, and we also have a bunch of other projects that our users deploy together. Kubernetes was obviously called out as one of those, but there's many of them. Um, so we set a, a goal across uh, the board and the TC and the UC uh, to really actively think about adjacent technologies. It's like those other technologies that are connected to Interstack, OpenStack, or interrelated with OpenStack. Um, and, and the idea that you know, OpenStack depends on other projects, and OpenStack's success depends on the success of other projects. So we really want to help spread that success around and not just try to like keep it all to ourselves. Um, so that continued to evolve over the year. Uh, late in 2017, we introduced the idea of pilot projects. This was in Sydney. Um, and and the, the, at that point, we'd kind of evolved the adjacent technologies idea to say, to start with, the ones we're most interested are data center cloud, which is OpenStack, so the one we always have been interested in. Uh, containers, edge computing, and CICD. So those were the four we started with, the, like the big strategic focus areas that we started with late in 2017. Um, in December 2017, we uh, introduced the first pilot project that was Kata Containers. Um, and then in early 2018, we started circulating this open infra name not as a name for anything, just sort of like, we were talking about open dev and open infra, and just sort of started to circulating some words, thinking about the idea. Uh, we had the second pilot project in uh, May of 2018, that was Zool, so CICD. Containers CICD, we got two of our, our four areas. Um, and then later in 2018, we added pilot projects Airship and Starling X. Um, and it was at the last summit that we announced that the summit was going to be changing its name. Now, there, there's some reasons for that. You know, if you kind of watch that evolution all along the way, we've always had, we've always tried to be welcoming to a large number of related and interrelated open source projects. Um, and we just found that we just got such a great response to that open infra name when we started circulating it. Um, and we were trying to make a more open and welcoming community to those interrelated projects. So it really made sense for the summit to take on that name because it is a, it's a meeting ground uh, for everyone in open infrastructure, 
not just for one set of people or one community. So now at this summit, we, we have changed the name and we announced our first confirmed projects. So we talked about the idea that, well, someday pilot projects would graduate, but we didn't want to like lock it down too soon. So we gave it some time to kind of like evolve and settle and, and then sort of actively worked on uh, what it means to graduate, what it means to be confirmed. So it's really, really important for everyone to know we are not abandoning OpenStack. That is not the point of open infrastructure at all whatsoever. Um, the open infrastructure idea is good for OpenStack and good for the other projects involved. OpenStack's success depends on the success of the others. And their success depends on us in a lot of cases. Not for all of them, but for some of them. What we really want to do with these new projects is, you know, OpenStack's been around a while. We've, we've learned a lot of things about open collaboration. Um, and we think that you know, sharing the lessons we've learned over the years with other newer projects can be really helpful to them. But also just, just offering that little extra bit of support. You know, getting started with an open source project can be really hard when you're doing it on your own. So just that kind of, that little helping hand uh, to, to help them along the way is really important. That's really all I've got to say. Uh, does anybody have questions about open infra? Is it confusing? Are you okay with it? <laughs> All right. Lightning talk done. <laughs> Thank you.